FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey, FOMO Sapiens. This is FOMO Monday, the snackable companion to FOMO Sapiens, which of course will be back on Thursday with a full episode. But until then, happy FOMO Monday, best day of the week. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, this week's topic on the show on Thursday is how to avoid burnout. And we're going to be talking to Jennifer Ross, who's the author of The Burnout Epidemic. And I got to tell you, burnout, I mean, I've been there. I'm sure you have been too. It is, it's not a good thing. It kind of sucks up your whole life. And my biggest moment of burnout, actually, I will share with you, was in 2009. So as many of you know, I was working at AIG. I laugh because it's like painful. I was working at AIG during the financial crisis in their PE group, and the whole thing blew up. My stock fell like 97%, and I just had like a physical and mental breakdown. I had some mystery illness. They never figured out what it was, but I had blurry vision for six months. I had night sweats. It was terrible. They thought I had mono. I don't know. I didn't apparently, but I was a mess. And I remember just feeling awful all the time. And in early 2009, I went on this trip to India that I had a wedding and I wasn't going to go, but I was like, man, my life is so bad right now. I'm depressed. I feel awful. Maybe I'll just go on this trip and I'll feel different. And so I went and I remember like I got on the plane and I felt awful and I couldn't read a book because my, my vision was so blurry and I get to Delhi and I'm then fly on to Bombay, Mumbai, and I'm staying at the Taj hotel and the Taj hotel at the time had just been attacked in that horrible terrorist attack. And so I decided to stay there just because I thought, you know, these people need customers and I felt really bad and it's a beautiful hotel. So I stayed there and I show up And it still smelled like burning and it was really depressing and awful. And half the hotel was closed and I stayed in this room and they were really nice. They sent me a bottle of wine and it was the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep. And so I took a walk around the block and I realized even in this very fancy part of Mumbai, of course, there's many people who don't have homes and they're sleeping on the street and many of those people are children and they're sleeping on cardboard. And as I walked around, I just thought to myself, man, you know, your problems, Patrick, They're not as bad as you probably think they are in your head. People have real problems in the world. And, you know, I just, from that moment, something kind of changed for me. And I decided to kind of get out of the burnout mindset. And I got back to New York and my vision was mysteriously corrected. It was kind of crazy. And then I started running like 40 miles a week. And I sort of just like de-emphasized work because frankly, what was I going to do? Our company was kind of imperiled. And, you know, I, I just felt stronger. But I got to say, the the burnout didn't disappear in the way that the physical symptoms did. In fact, I ended up taking a sabbatical to sort of get through the burnout because I just was like, I was broken inside and I felt very negative about the workplace and about, I just was like, this whole economy is like a a bad thing and I just want to drop out. I I probably should have just joined an ashram and just become like a, a sadhu or something, but I didn't do that. I ended up instead just getting into a whole new line of work. And so I needed to go through the period of working through the burnout and it's really hard. And by the way, the last two years have been so difficult in terms of burnout because you'll work all the time. There's no separation between the office and home and just like everything's been accelerated and stressful and terrible. And so a lot of people are feeling burnout and they're not doing well. And I've seen this, you know, I have a friend, a really good friend who is deeply burned out and he confessed to me, that he was so stressed that he wasn't sleeping right, that he was sick all the time just from feeling so much stress and he needed a recharge. He ended up actually moving jobs and reconnecting with his sense of self through a break. But again, like not everybody can do that. So I just wanna talk about that because I think really what is the solution for burnout? If you think about it, and at least my sort of kind of way I think about it is how to be burnout is to create in your life a sense of possibility that you've lost. If you can get back to the place where you feel like, hey, there's a point to all this, 
and you have a sort of the the mission statement for why you're doing the things you do, then that really helps to pull you out of the doldrums. So that's what I want to talk about today. FOMO. FOMO. All right, we're talking about overcoming burnout. Number one, the first thing that you can do to overcome burnout is take a sabbatical. Now, this may not be possible for everybody, so I'm not assuming, but if you do a sabbatical, like I did a sabbatical for about a year because I'd saved and saved and saved, and thankfully I could do that. And I gotta say, it took me like six months to the point where I was like sort of mentally unfried. And I did that by just getting up every day and not having a plan. And for me, that was what I needed because I was so scheduled and so like in this mindset of like just working for the the powers that be that I needed to erase that in order to kind of do new things. That may not be what you need to do. Maybe you're just burned out because like you work all the time, but just injecting a sabbatical into your life, it just changes everything because you just be kind of like shuffle the cards, right? And I have talked about this in the past because I I mean, I love a sabbatical right now, frankly. I can't do it right now, but uh, I had a, a, a friend who started this whole thing called the Sabbatical Project. His name is DJ Dodona. He talks about this. You can check out his website. He wrote a three-part blog post. You can find it at patrickmcginnis.com all about the value of sabbaticals. And by the way, you don't have to take a year off. That is like extreme sabbaticals. You can take a shorter amount of time off and maybe your employee will even pay you for it. A lot of companies actually give people sabbaticals after a period of time, but having that time to sort of just like not be in the work environment and just sort of do other stuff and like, it's, it's very powerful. So think about sabbaticals, even if it's a little tiny one as a way to avoid or recharge from burnout. Number two, this one is one we can all do, so no excuses. Create a clear separation between work and life. So much of the burnout happens when you just don't stop. It's like you're on the old email till 10 at night. And by the way, some people are expected to do that at work, but you don't have to necessarily. It's like, you know, you have a job. It's not like you are an indentured servitude. And so creating boundaries, putting down the phone when you get home and not picking it up again and just setting expectations at work. Again, it's, it can be really hard. And we did talk about this on the episode I did with Juliet Funt, A Minute to Think, uh, a little while back. So go check that out and how she deals with it. But a lot of the stuff that the, these sort of expectations to be on all the time are self-imposed, Right. I know I definitely go down that trail where I will look at my email and be on email till all hours. And so I I put my phone down when I get home and I stay off my computer as much as I can. And when I don't do that, I notice I'm working. So you have to also be disciplined in terms of setting those boundaries for yourself. And there's a lot of ways to do this. We had a really good episode with the founders of Cave Day who talk about how to create the separation between work and life. And so go back and listen to that. But one thing you can do really simply is just moving your technology outside of your space and not having it open all the time. That right there, taking off all your notifications, like I forget where my phone is. I keep losing my phone because I got the little the iPhone mini. And so like it's a little tiny thing. I lose it all the time. And I'm okay with that. I like losing my phone because I don't need more phone time. I need less phone time. Number three, oh, this is like, I just teed myself up, digital detox. Now, one thing you can try, just try it for a day. Like, just don't go on your phone or don't go on socials, right? Just get away. That creates space that is so valuable in your life. Man, I look at my stats every week about how much I'm on my phone and stuff, and I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm reasonably okay. But I was with a friend last week, and we compared our stats, and he was double me. And I was like, man, you need to take a little time off. So definitely trying to create and inject detox space into your life. And it may be little things like, I'm always amazed when I go to a yoga class and somebody brought their phone with them. Why, why are you doing that? Leave your phone in your locker. Because the temptation is the minute you get out of Shavasana, you pick up the phone and all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, all my life is happening and so stressful. I don't pick that darn thing up for 20, 30 minutes after the class. And I feel like that makes a huge difference. Same with meditation, all these sorts of things. So like just inject some digital detox into your daily life. Number four, exercise. Exercise is great in terms of just regaining your sense of worth and your, your health and just like the mental sort of release that it creates with all the chemical stuff that happens in your brain when you're working out. So if you're not exercising, and by the way, you don't have to run a marathon, but just get outside, go for a walk. You know, this is a great way to cultivate like mindfulness, right? We talk about that and sort of like when you're running, listening to music, you're, you're in your flow, your mind is free. And so you can actually think about other things and it's just a great way to give yourself that break and to rebuild resilience. 
Number five, social engagement. What happened to me when I had this burnout uh, in 2009 is I receded from society. Actually, I have a really sad story that I will share with you right now that I've never told anybody in public, which is that I was really unwell. I was sick and I was depressed. And I also was in terrible shape. And um, I'd put on weight and all this sort of stuff. And I went to this party, a dinner party at somebody's house. And I showed up late because I was so exhausted that I couldn't get out of bed. And so my friends were teasing me. They were like, ha ha, you're so, you think you're so, you know, important that you show up late to things. And, you know, it's kind of rude. And it was, and I felt embarrassed because I didn't want to tell them that actually I just couldn't get out of bed. I was not feeling good. And, and um, then I sat down on a chair and it broke and I just, everybody laughed at me for that too. And I was like, I need to get in shape. And so um, when, when you're feeling bad, being in a group like that, especially if they don't know what's going on with you, you might end up sort of being the butt of a bunch of jokes, which I was, and I didn't feel very good about that. I remember just feeling deeply ashamed and terrible and was like, I can't explain to these people what's going on with me. So I, 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 when I felt better then I was able to tell them, but I think it would have been way better if I had been able to just engage with somebody and talk to them. I felt all the shame and it just didn't get anything positive in my life to feel the shame, right? It doesn't deliver anything positive. In fact, the opposite is true that had I been more engaged socially, I think I would have felt a lot better. So it's hard to do, but deep social engagement really helps. FOMO. FOMO. Number six, self-care meditation. I mean, that is good for every day of the week. And you know, as you know, I meditate every day. And the benefit for me is that my capacity to freak out is decreased by about 95%. So think about how you can do some meditation. I mean, the term self-care, I think it's kind of woo-woo. And so I, I say it kind of jokingly, but it's true. It's true. And so meditation is a great way to sort of, it's like giving your, your mind like a little trip to the spa. Number seven, Make plans to move on. If you're burned out because you hate your job, take action. Figure out how can I move on to something else and maybe even take a little break before that new thing. And I think what happens, I'm talking about my friend earlier who was in this bad state and wasn't sleeping and was stressed out. He was so conditioned to thinking like, I have to work at this job and like be so intense about it that he was not giving himself the space to look for other opportunities. And the minute he decided to do that, he found something. And so we get into this like mindset of like indentured servitude, which is very natural to do. It's like you, your work is like a soap opera that you're starring in. It's like the movie of your life and, you're, and that's what you do every day. But it is not, of course, who you are and you can reinvent yourself at any time. Easier said than done, of course, but, um, but you can do it. And so just getting into the space where you start to reimagine like what's possible is so important. And then when you do that, you can start making plans to move on and escape that very toxic place that you're in. Finally, you may need professional help. A coach, a therapist, maybe you will realize in the process that your burnout is coming from something other than your work. Maybe there are things that you need to address. And so you don't have to do it alone, I guess is my point. Like there are people who are trained to help. And so if you're feeling deep burnout, think about who could help you and then go find that help. All right, that is my advice for burnout. Just to recap, take a sabbatical. Two, you gotta have that separation between work and life. Three, get yourself a digital detox. Four, exercise. Five, create deep social engagement in your life. Six, meditate, a little self-care there. Seven, make a plan to move on to get away from that thing that makes you unhappy. And number eight, get some help if you need it. Always good to lean on somebody else. All right, everybody, that is my, my advice on burnouts. I'm sure you have had your own experiences, so feel free to share with me. You can find me at Let's Connect at PatrickMcGinnis.com, on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. We'll be talking about burnout on Thursday in depth with an expert. And until then, try some of these things and take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.